was outlined, we didn't see any new information. Um, uh, but ministers were able to confirm uh, the Crown's view that it has the capacity to recognise rights and interests and that they won't be impaired by proceeding with the sale. But three news might be. <laughs> Uh, we affirmed our preliminary view that the Shares Plus concept put forward by the Waitangi Tribunal uh, uh, is not one we will pursue for a number of reasons. Uh, financial redress and input into resource management decisions can be provided in other, in other and better ways. Uh, appointing directors and exercising shareholding voting rights can be achieved in other ways with the Crown, as the Crown remains a 51% owner. giving iwi special rights uh, to make management decisions within the company will work well and in most of the submitters actually agree with the Crown about that and finally Shares Plus could create potential conflicts within and between different iwi groups. Uh, the government's committed to continuing constructive discussions with iwi over their rights and interests. Um, I'm convinced in the, that the government's wider program of offering the shares is in New Zealand's best interest. Um, over the last uh, couple of weeks I've visited uh, political uh, and investment leaders in the UK and Germany and at the IMF annual meeting and it's clear uh, from those discussions that uh, lower levels of debt are much better uh, and the sale of these shares will allow us to meet our ongoing commitments to um, investing in social infrastructure such as schools, hospitals and ultra-fast broadband without having to borrow any more than is absolutely necessary from overseas lenders. Uh, and all, of course this will also create investment opportunities for New Zealanders. So the HUI, uh, we're a genuine consultation um, by a number of the participants agreed with um, aspects of the Crown views and disagreed uh, some of what Waitangi Tribunal said agreed with others and we think we've uh, given the issue a pretty good hearing and have now decided to proceed. Isn't potential call of action going to create uncertainty for private investors on the income that potentially Well, I think it, it, it's going to be court action. It's in everyone's best interest that that's uh, initiated soon and dealt with uh, within the timetable that the Crown's laid out. Uh, and if that goes ahead with that, we'll run. Uh, Get rid of that, that source of uncertainty. And will it hurt the value of my group power? I wouldn't expect so. Um, it depends, I mean, on the nature of the court. We wouldn't want to prejudge the nature of the court action, but if it's, if it is, uh, for instance, that the Crown hasn't met its obligations under the treaty, uh, then we certainly believe that we have, uh, and that um, someone going to court would have trouble succeeding on that basis. What advice do you have on any timeframe of court action? Well, the, uh, <coughs> the advice is that uh, someone who wants to prevent the Crown proceeding would need to take action when the Crown takes a step towards sale. Um, so, for instance, we want, we're going to um, proceed with the order and council uh, process over the next week. It's a pretty clear signal to anyone who wants to prevent the sale going ahead that the Crown is taking its first substantive step uh, and if there's going to be court action well, we may as well get on with it and get it sorted out. Is there any advice on how long that court action would take? Well the Crown has outlined its uh, proposals quite clearly over the last 12 months or so. Uh, all the parties including the Waitangi Tribunal um, uh, are familiar with the timetable. In fact the Waitangi Tribunal worked pretty hard to fit the Crown's feasible timetable and um, we now that we're looking to proceed in, the, in a March April next year there's, there's plenty of time to get through court action that may need to apply. So putting it another way, you don't think that will delay the March June um, timetable whatever <coughs> challenge comes to the challenge? No, we, no, we don't think it will. Is your being advice um, quite strong about thinking that you win court? Well, we 
taken the best legal advice we've got, and the legal advice has been that um, we have met all of the consultation requirements that the Crown ought to meet, and on that basis we're in a strong position. Um, you know, you can't be certain about how court action will go. So you're, are you thinking by doing this today, you, you, you want you're calling for court action to happen, you want it to happen as soon as possible? Well, we signal that we intend to proceed, and <coughs> anyone who, um, you know, that anyone who wants the opportunity will have it in the next week uh, to take court action. We've talked about other options of recognising Māori rights and interests. What specifically, or how specifically is that trying to happen? Well, it has happened in a number of instances. For instance, the um, Waikato River uh, settlement involved the creation of a river board uh, and the um, and government providing a clean-up, 30-year clean-up fund. And uh, as part of the consultation, I was talking to some of the UWI involved in that, and they seemed um, quite happy with those arrangements. So there's been no, any range, anywhere it's back where there have been recognition of those rights and interests is pretty particular to those circumstances. Well, you, are you financial redress, though, are you going to be entering into compensation negotiations with separate EWs? Well, uh, right now, no. Um, the, as we've always said, uh, we are not interested in, in a, a national settlement. Uh, these rights and interests are highly localised. Some of them have been resolved through treaty uh, settlements. Uh, others may be resolved through treaty settlements in the future, but um, we wouldn't want to prejudge them around financial Prime. compensation you, you say or anything like that. So you say that the point of directors and exercise of shareholder voting rights can also be achieved in other ways for the Crown. What other ways are those? Well, the, for instance, the, the power to appoint a director doesn't need to come through um, some kind of special rights attached to shares. Uh, the Crown has the option, for instance, to appoint a director that um, might, which, who might, uh, who might support in the case of Meridian. Okay. Uh, so we can achieve some of these objectives just through the normal process. So you have some sort of around consultation with the EWI concerns around that sort of appointment? That's right. In fact, in the last couple of days, there's been a, 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 a um, Tainui a Tainui director has just stepped down from my River Path uh, just because I think concerns about the sea conflict uh, because of the discussion that's going on. Minister, if, if court action does proceed, which we're expecting now, I mean, you're basically saying bring it on, are you going to accept the outcome of that court action or will you legislate? We're a law abiding government. Well, I mean, obviously, the last time this happened, the government legislated and overturned the decision of the Court of Appeal in Ngati Arpa. Can you give us an undertaking that you won't do that? Well, yes, yes I can. Um, I mean, no, there are different sorts of cases. In this, in this case, uh, we have legislated for the sale of the assets that have been passed by Parliament. Um, it's a clear government policy and has been for 18 months. Uh, the kind of court action would be uh, likely to be an injunction of some to prevent the sale going ahead, uh, while other were resolved. Sorted out. Yeah. And well, when we those wouldn't expect to legislate to um, legislate over the a, an injunction. Reduction. No. Okay. No. But what about the wider issues? Would you legislate to overturn um, decisions of, of the court if they make give you clarity about who owns water? Well, I mean, that's, that's speculation. I mean, there's no. We're not in that. We're not in that position. We we're even considering it. But are you essentially giving this decision to the courts to decide? Well, no. There's a couple of different things here. The, the court action that we've, we've been discussing here is all about whether the sale will proceed. Yes, I appreciate that, uh, but I mean, obviously, there's a wider issue that has to be determined at some point, and the and the treaty of White, the the White Tranga Tribunal hasn't even reported back yet, and they've now indicated they're going to report back in December. I think is that your your understanding still? Uh, with the trial, I'm not sure when they're reporting back, but um, we're we're well short of um, discussions about. Um, court action or legislation or whatever. Individually, we have the right to go to court and they have done so over the years. Is there, is there any need, actually, to remove Mighty River from the SOE Act now? Do we not do that next year closer to the actual sale? Is this just a tactic? Do you like to, to tease out any legal fashion? Well, no, it's not just a tactic. I mean, it's, it's a decision to make it clear to potential litigants that um, the Crown intends to proceed. So you, you, yeah, I mean, 
and we, we, insofar as we expect there's likely to be court action, then we are best to get on with it. And the order and council are the clear signal that the Crown intends to proceed. If they want to stop the SLE being ready for sale, then now's the time to take action. What, what's to stop them, though, doing it much, uh, filing court action much closer to the time? Wouldn't that be in their best interest if they want to stop sale to, to wait for the last possible minute? Well, but our, our advice is a court would regard that as um, trying to be a nuisance rather than trying to resolve the issues. You know, the, the intention has been clear for a long time now. We'll take this action this next week. There's no ambiguity about it. And if they want, the claimants want a fair, you know, everyone to have a fair hearing, then they would take action sooner rather than later. Sorry, just to clarify that the negotiations, Mr. Key has said that he would negotiate with Ely. Um, on a one-by-one -one basis. Now, are you saying that it would be done just through the treaty settlement process, that there won't be any negotiations at all directly relating to the partial sale of any assets? Well, we've been negotiating on historical rights and interests, and that's why they largely fit within the treaty settlement area, <coughs> although we've also been debating uh, with them uh, issues around health and quality of the water and, and potential governance. The area of ownership of some Maori with a suit that they have is a contemporary claim and the government rejects that. So we we'll won't be negotiating on ownership. Okay, so it'll we'll all be done with the next treaty framework. The, the government's so. view is crystal clear when it comes to the ownership of water and that is that nobody owns it. And that could include compensation as we settled uh, as we settled with historic claims in terms of any financial injuries well, through that process. We wouldn't be paying compensation because we to pay compensation, you have to recognise that they have a contemporary claim and we don't accept that they have a contemporary claim. Except they have historical claims uh, around certain aspects and we're working our way through those on a case-by-case -case basis. But for the kind of Maori who take the view that the Maori can have, that they own water, the government's view is you want. Um, Prime Minister, you are aware that the Tainui Treaty Settlement specifically did not resolve the claim to the Waikato River? Yeah, well, they, 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 that's right. I mean, and, and there's certainly where they've reserved their rights, and Tainu is one of those when it comes to the contemporary claims, and they can reserve them all they like. It doesn't mean the government has to agree with them. Well, they're entitled, though, to pursue their claim, aren't they? Sure, they can do that. No, and, no. I mean, it, and it is possible that, 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 that the Waikato River might be given to Iwi. Uh, personally, I think it would be highly unlikely, but, um, yep, people can always test their rights in courts if they choose to. But I think the legal action that um, may well ensue from the uh, announcement made today is in relation to the capacity for the Crown to progress the sale of mighty river power shares, not about um, the ownership of water. Very different issue. Has there been any reviews of potential sale prices and, and proceeds given what's happened with the electricity market in the last few months? Um, no, no specific review. Um, the, that's why the uh, amount that we thought we could get was specified as a range of five to seven billion. That's gone below five which is a 40% you know, variation in the potential price. Uh, but certainly, if, if we get another few months down the track closer to the place, the government will be developing a much um, more refined idea of what, what the value, at least of 49% of Navi River Power is. Is there a price that you wouldn't go below? Is there a price we wouldn't go below? Yes. Well, we just simply haven't made any decisions about that. I mean, we've always said that the sale is subject to market conditions, and on any given day there will be some factors which are tending to push the prices up. For instance, the hunt around the world for assets that yield some return, as opposed to the um, 0 to 1% interest rates that are applied <coughs> to the developed world. Something paying 5 or 6% yield now looks a lot more attractive. People are willing to pay more for it. On the one hand, on the other hand, <coughs> people can see the demand for electricity has flattened out a bit. So um, you, know, you wouldn't want to speculate about where that's going to push the price on the day. Well, you set that minimum price once we had the initial um, expression of interest from potential shareholders to gauge the, the rough price and, and um, level of interest that well, we set in that you know, well, minimum floor? We'd let you know about the actual detail of that proce process with the Crown's view about the price we want to get into detail about it today. What's the only way off yet? What's the state of play with solid energy? Have you appointed all the um, directors or the directors lined up to a point and any reports you've had back from them on their state of play?
be best to address that directly to the Minister of State and Enterprises, particularly over the last few weeks, but there's a busy achievement in place and uh, so having a thorough look at it. Okay, we might kick in 16 pitches of time. So um, I'm going to the RSA in the general meeting. I'm delighted.